Hello stampers and thank you so much for joining me for today's video. This is Laura Buchler of Inky Fingers Paper Crafting, your independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Nanaimo, BC. Today I'm going to show you an awesome technique called Emboss Resist and we're going to make another autumn themed card. I was inspired by a design I saw online by Lori Schmidt of Stampin' Up! North and she used a beautiful feather stamp for her card. I'm going to use a couple of leaf stamps from the Rooted in Nature stamp set and a sentiment from Itty Bitty Greetings. So the cardstock measurements are very, very simple. I've got a card base uh, made from Seaside Spray cardstock. That's one of the 2019 in colors. And this is cut to five and a half by eight and a half. And I've got a piece of white cardstock that measures three by five and a quarter inches. Now I'm going to use both gold and sterling silver embossing powder for the leaves, but I have to do those separately. So I'm going to start with the silver. Now when you're going to do embossing, what you need is Versamark. This is a special kind of ink for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's clear ink. Uh, and secondly, it dries a little bit more slowly than our, our regular ink pads. So that is going to allow me to apply the embossing powder. Of course, the embossing powder is only going to stick to the places where I've inked up with the, with the Versamark. And then I'm going to use the heat tool to melt the embossing powder right into the cardstock. I'm going to use my embossing buddy. This is a, a very handy tool to have. It just removes any uh, sticky residue or um, anything that might cause your embossing powder to be in a place where you don't want it to be. At this point, I'm going to add my sentiment and I'm going to stamp that with Versamark as well. Now, because the Versamark is a clear ink, you can't really see anything that I've done here, but it's going to start looking cool with the next step. I'm gonna take my sterling silver embossing powder and sprinkle it over the cardstock, making sure to cover all the places where I've added Versamark ink. And then pour off the excess. And as I said, it's only going to stick to the places where I stamped. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit right here. All right. Now I'm going to use my heat tool. I notice when, when people are using this at class, they tend to to move it around a lot and you really don't need to. Uh, what I recommend is just keep your heat tool in one spot and as the powder starts to melt and, and uh, you know stick to the cardstock and be finished, move on to the next spot. So you'll see me doing that um, as you watch. Okay, so those silver leaves are looking amazing. Could you see as I was uh, using the heat tool that the embossing powder was changing color and becoming very shiny and silvery as it finished melting into the cardstock. So that's how you can tell that it's done. So I'm finished with the silver, now I'm going to move on to the gold. So again, I start with the Versamark. I 
now I'm going to sprinkle on the gold embossing powder. Okay, so that's looking pretty great. Time for the heat tool. What I'm going to do is add a band of color that's a little bit narrower than the sponge brayer. And one way I could do that is just by using some spare paper to cover up and just leave a space, but what I actually did is I made myself a template. So I'm just going to gently tape this on with the washi tape. I'm gonna grab my Seaside Spray ink, and as I'm applying the ink to the sponge brayer, you will notice that I keep rolling the sponge brayer in one direction over and over and over, because if I rolled it back and forth, it would just end up getting ink on one spot and I want the ink to go all the way around. So I'm just rolling it forward over and over and over till that's good and inky. And then I'm just gonna roll it over my cardstock. And there's what it looks like now. So for one final touch, before I add this to the front of my card, I'm going to add some score lines at the bottom here. This is again something that I saw on Lori's card and I thought it created a really cool effect. Add some cool detail to the bottom of the card there. And now I'm ready to attach this. And there we go, there's our completed card with the emboss resist technique. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please drop me a comment below and let me know what you think. And if there's something specific that you'd like to learn about, please let me know because I'm always interested in your ideas and suggestions. Remember that you can purchase all the products shown on my website, inkyfingers.ca, and you'll also find more project tutorials, current promotional details and catalogs, my local workshop schedule, and the sign up for my monthly email newsletter. If you're watching this on YouTube, I want to let you know that I have a Facebook page under Inky Fingers Paper Crafting, where you can join a weekly card sketch challenge and win a prize from me. Now, if you place an order today, please remember to use the current hostess code, which you can find on my website, because everyone who uses that code will get a free gift from me. And if you'd like to earn your own hostess rewards, it's a great time of year to host a party because we've got the holiday catalog and the annual catalog to play with. So. All you need to do is either place an order of over $200, or you can contact me and we'll start planning your own virtual or in-home party. Drop me a line for more details. Have a great day, everyone, and happy stamping. Bye.